In this video, we will show you how to replace your engine water pump. Let's get started. Let's make our way under the hood. We're going to come directly over to the radiator cap. Carefully touch on it and make sure it's cool to the touch. You never want to open up your radiator cap when it's hot. Now to open this, you just want to press it down and turn it counterclockwise. Keep in mind, it could be under pressure. So make sure when you lift it up, you lift it away from your face. The next thing you want to do is have a peek at the bottom here and just inspect that seal. Make sure it doesn't look dry rotted or cracked in any way. Assuming it looks good, we'll just put it back on here lightly so the air can still vent and now we can make our way under the vehicle. We'll make our way right over to the passenger side lower radiator. You're going to find the drain. You want to make sure that you drain all of your coolant into a nice collection receptacle so you can either recycle it or reuse it as necessary. You can continue on by removing this top engine cover and then removing the air inlet tube from the area. It'll give you a lot more room. To do that, we'll use a 10 millimeter socket along these two bolts. Now let's make our way to the intake. We'll use an eight millimeter to loosen this clamp. We'll give that a little wiggle, break it free from the throttle body. Now that we have the hose off of there, continue on to the air filter box. We'll open up both these clamps. Now we can take this entire unit and shift it up just like this. We'll use a bungee cord of some sort to hold it up. We'll continue on to the serpentine belt tensioner with a 14 millimeter. All you want to do is come right into the center here. Get your tool onto the center bolt and then turn it counterclockwise to release tension from the belt. Now we can fully remove our serpentine belt from the area. We're going to start removing the water pump pulley from the water pump itself. Now you're going to notice that I do not have my coolant fan in this area. It does not have to be removed for this process. I only have it out so the camera can get a clear view. We'll use a 10 millimeter to remove all four of these bolts. Leave that one loose. Inspect your hardware as you remove it. Before we fully remove that last bolt, it's going to be time to pry the pulley off of the water pump. Fully remove your last bolt and the pulley. Now with the pulley out of the way, the next thing we can do is start removing our six 12 millimeter headed bolts that hold the water pump to the engine. For the first bolt, I'm gonna make it loose, but I'm gonna leave it in there a couple threads. There we are. Let's pull it out, take a quick inspection. Assuming it looks good, go ahead and put it back in a couple threads and fully remove the rest of your bolts. Make sure that you put a collection bucket under the area to collect any of the fluid that might happen to come out.
Now we can move along to our two driver's side bolts. These ones are going to be a little bit harder to get to. You'll find one just under the other. All right, here comes that last bolt right down in the far corner here. Now let's grab onto that water pump. We'll fully remove our last bolt there, and then we can remove the water pump from the engine compartment. There it is, friends. Once you have the water pump out of the way, the next thing you need to pay attention to is the engine where the water pump was. You're going to find a gasket in that area. You need to make sure that the gasket is fully removed. Once you have it out of the way, continue on by cleaning down the engine so it's a smooth, flat surface. Once you feel as though you have it scraped down well enough, make sure that you wipe off any of the debris or oils that are in the area. It's also a good idea to make sure you try to get out as much of that coolant as possible. Now the next thing you want to do is make sure you clean up the threading on all of your mounting bolts. Once you've done that, we can continue on with the installation of our water pump. Let's have a look from the back side. That's the side with the impeller. We want to make sure that you take the gasket and you put it in position so you know that all of the mounting holes line up. If you put it backwards, the holes will not line up. That's going to give you an issue putting it on the engine. Now once that's on there, let's go ahead and turn it back around. I'll take one of my mounting bolts and slide it right on through that gasket. That'll hold the gasket in place for me while I continue putting the water pump down towards the engine. Once we get it down there, we'll start in all of our mounting bolts. You never want to tighten any of the mounting bolts before you start all of them in. There we are. Okay, at this point I have all of my mounting bolts started. I'll continue on by snugging them up, making sure that the water pump sits flush against the engine. Once you have them all snug, torque them to 18 foot-pounds. Once you have all of your mounting bolts torqued, continue on by cleaning down the area, especially the pulleys. You want to make sure that no coolant gets on your serpentine belt when it's reinstalled. Now let's have a look at our water pump pulley. The area that you want to pay attention to is along the back side. You can see exactly where the water pump is supposed to sit. 
you want to make sure this is a nice, clean, smooth surface. Also, inside the center of that circle, you can tell on ours is a little bit rusted. Use a little bit of sandpaper and clean it out. Now once you've cleaned the threads on your mounting bolts, we can take this and we'll slide it right in position on the water pump. You want to try to line up all those bolt holes. Once you have them lined up, start them each in there. Make sure the pulley is flush to the water pump. Once they're all started, snug them up, then torque them to 87 inch pounds. Now to torque these bolts, you might find it to be a little bit difficult because the pulley's going to want to spin on you. In this case, you can use two 10 millimeter headed sockets. Once you have those in place, continue on with a screwdriver or pry bar. We'll come right in between this area. Once you've done that, it'll hold it in place. You can continue on by torquing the two bolts that are available, swap the sockets to the bolts that you just torqued, and then fully torque the other two. Okay, we're at the point that we're gonna put on the serpentine belt. But once again, I'm gonna mention, you need to make sure that there is no coolant on any of your pulleys. Assuming it looks good, let's get ready for our install. Let's start with one side of the serpentine belt, and we're gonna make our way all the way down over the AC compressor. That's on the driver's side, all the way on the bottom. Now once you have it down and around that, we're going to take the side of the belt that has the backing and we're going to put it directly up against the fan clutch pulley. We'll swing it right down and around. I'm going to try to bring this down and around the crank on the other side. Now we'll just go ahead and make sure it slides up onto all those pulleys correctly. While we continue working on the side that has the AC compressor, you'll notice directly above it, you have a ribbed idler pulley. Let's make sure that we put the serpentine belt over that pulley. Now we can continue on towards the passenger side. We'll make sure that we bring the belt directly underneath the crank. As we continue, you wanna make sure that you make your way up and over the tensioner, and then continue bringing it down. We'll bring it down and around the alternator. After you've done that, you'll continue by giving it a little bit of tautness along where the power steering pump is. Now, before we continue by putting our tool on the tensioner, you wanna just double check all of those pulleys. Make sure the belt's sitting in them properly. If it looks like it's off by even one tooth, it's gonna damage the belt. Once you've got the tensioner pulled all the way counterclockwise, you can slide that belt over your power steering pulley.
Once you've removed your serpentine belt tool, just quickly double check that belt. It can't be off by even one tooth. Let's take this air intake and we'll slide it into position on the throttle body. Once you have it on there, continue on by tightening your clamp. Now we can start resecuring our upper clamshell for our air filter box. You want to make sure you have it secured on the far side. And once you have it in there, continue on by locking it in with your two locking clamps. Now we can put on our upper engine cover. Let's have a look at the bottom. You're going to find that you have two little locating pieces that protrude downward. On the engine's intake, you're going to find some rubber grommets for them to line up with and slide into. Once I have them both in position, I'll press them in. Continue on with your two mounting bolts. Start them both in and then snug them up. Let's continue on underneath the passenger side of the radiator. We'll make sure that we close off that drain. Once you have it closed, continue on by drying off the area. If you had a splash shield that was underneath this area, reinstall it now. Now we're gonna start filling the cooling system. Over the radiator, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have some sort of funnel system to help burp out any air that's in the cooling system. Now this isn't a typical cooling system where if you were to look at the overflow tank, this is actually a pressurized overflow tank. So what we need to do is continue on by filling the overflow tank up to the maximum line, which would be able to see down along this area inside the engine compartment. Once you finish there, we'll continue on at the radiator and fill it. Once we feel as though we have no air bubbles coming out of the system, you can go ahead and run it. Now we can close this and move over to the radiator side. Now what we need to do here with the coolant funnel is to continue filling it up to this point. Let it finish burping. Once it finishes burping, make sure you have it approximately halfway. We'll start up the vehicle, let it run for a little while. You wanna make sure you have plenty of heat coming out of the vents. Also, make your way out here and double check to make sure there's no more air burping out of the system. Now, once you've let it run and you're sure that there's no air in the system, go ahead and cork it off. We'll remove our system here. Continue on with the cap. Put it on there, make sure it's nice and tight. All right, at this point, you can go ahead and take your vehicle for a road test. Make sure you've got plenty of heat coming out of the vents, and of course, double check to make sure you don't have any leaks. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.